Hey folks and welcome to the GPU benchmark video that I never actually intended to make. Now I'm sure anyone who scours online for components to use in their PCs will have found themselves in this situation at some point. Opening up the eBay app and going on the hunt for one thing and coming away with something completely different. What started out for me as a hunt for some PSU cables quickly changed when I seen that I had a surprise £15 off voucher from eBay. This was compounded when I came across a boxed and like new MSI GTX 970 with a best offer tag. I quickly put in an offer which seen me win the quite frankly stunning looking GeForce 900 series card for £5 less than I paid for my Gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti. Now a few of the comparison videos that I've done so far have been looking at cards which offer similar kind of performance to Nvidia's budget GTX 1050 Ti but at a much lower price point and I've often been met with the same comment, RX 470. Which I agree, it's entirely valid, I mean £20 more than the cheapest 1050 Ti and you get 25% more performance, it's an enticing proposition. But how about this GTX 970, an older card which can be hard for just a little bit less than the 1050 Ti, could it be equally as valid an option? Well for this video we're going to be testing both cards out using the R7 7800 rig and we're going to follow up in a later video using the quad core i5 4590. This Ryzen system has had a few BIOS updates since my initial look and the memory is now sitting at a stable 2400 MHz. It's still way off the 3000 MHz that the memory is capable of though but hopefully that will improve in the future. We've also got all 8 cores locked at 3.7 GHz so let's see how these two cards get on, one used, one new and both costing just about the same price. Before we dive into the benchmarks, I'm going to mention that the GTX 970 obviously uses a bit more power than the 1050 Ti, but it's certainly not as much as the old GTX 700 series cards or something like the R9 280X. The Maxwell architecture is powerful and it's fairly efficient as well, and using an online PSU calculator from Cooler Master, the system with the 970 should be fine with a good 400 watt PSU, although Nvidia does recommend that you use a minimum of 500 watts. As we know, the power strip in 1050Ti can basically run on anything and a 300 watt power supply should be fine, although it should be noted that at that kind of level you're leaving yourself very little room for overclocking. Our faithful 1050Ti test card from Gigabyte is built on a 14 nanometer process and features 768 shading units, 48 TMUs and 32 ROPs with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 connected using a 128 bit memory interface. The GPU operates at a frequency of about 1.35 GHz and boosts to about 1.47 and the memory out of the box is running at an effective speed of 7 GHz. The 970 on the other hand is built on a 28 nanometer process but it features 1664 shading units, 104 texture mapping units and 56 ROPs with 4 GB of GDDR5 memory buffer. With 3.5 gigs of that connected using a 256 bit memory interface with the remaining 0.5 GB connected using a much slower 64 bit bus. The cause of much concern and controversy when it was released. The GPU operates at a frequency of 1.1 GHz and boosts about 1.25 and its memory, just like the 1050Ti, runs at an effective speed of 7GHz. Now I picked up this card for £125, although I have heard people get it for less, there are also auctions online that can sometimes end for a little bit more. Now on to the benchmarks, first of all we've got Rise of the Tomb Raider, the inbuilt benchmark there, running at 1920x1080 on the high preset, which is what I've been playing the game at over the last few days. This built-in benchmark is a much better indication of game frame rates compared with the built-in benchmark on the 2013 version of Tomb Raider, and features a much wider variety of environments and shows off a lot of the nicer effects. In all honesty though, the game looks great on both cards. Performance however, it does vary quite a bit, with the GTX 970 returning the score about 30% faster than the 1050 Ti, with the benchmark returning frame rate scores a 63 compared with the Ti's 48. Crisis 3 now in the GTX 970 returns a silky smooth 89 FPS on average with minimums above that magical 60 FPS mark. Now this is a little bit lower than my quick look that I did last week, but it did consist of a larger playthrough, encompassing a lot more than the usual two chapters that I'd run my tests on. The GTX 1050 Ti returned the same sort of results as we've seen before, with averages just under 70 FPS and minimums in the mid 40s. Overall it's an increase of about 30% on the average and just under 15% on the minimums. Far Cry Primal's in-game benchmark on the Ultra preset with the HD texture pack enabled 
sees the GTX 970 leap ahead of the TI once again with an average frame rate of 57 FPS and minimums of 43. The 1050 Ti returns 37 on average and in this test we've seen a minimum frame rate of 30 FPS. That's an increase of 55% on average and 44% on the minimums. Finally, we run through the Hitman benchmark at 1920-1080 with the detail set to high. And the 970 is once again around 15% faster than the 1050Ti, returning an average frame rate of 91 compared to the Ti's 79. So is the GTX 970 worth it? Well, it's a resounding yes for me. Now, I completely understand the issues that some people have when I benchmark older cards like the GTX 700 series or even the HD 7000 series against the newer 1050Ti when they say stuff like the driver support's going to be an issue in the future, but spending just a little bit extra it mitigates this problem. Maxwell being only one generation behind Pascal and still the most popular GPU series I might add if you look on the Steam hardware survey means it's got to continue getting support. Couple this with the absolute brute power in that 970 means that for a long time to come you're going to be able to enjoy your games at high settings. The old RAM gate issue that caused so much buzz back at the beginning of 2015 it's not really an issue today to be honest with you. Any buyers of this card are generally going to be armed with the knowledge that you're getting a three and a half gigabyte card. And for a budget gaming machine, it's absolutely fine. Even with the HD texture pack enabled in something like Far Cry Primal, the 970 still returned better results than the 1050 Ti. Another thing that's worth noting is if you crank those settings up higher, the gap only gets bigger. And often using the higher settings, the 970 will still return results that are higher or on par with the 1050 Ti at lower settings. For those that are wanting maximum performance at the price of a 1050 Ti and want to stick to the green team, the 970 is the card you should be looking at at this point in 2017. When the RX 500 series comes out and those 470 and 480 prices drop, that may be the way to go at that point. But at this point in time, the GTX 970 offers performance much better than the 1050 Ti for the same price. And the same performance is something like an RX 470 for a lower price. It also overclocks like an absolute demon with ease, which has seen my average FPS increase from anywhere between 10 and 15%, depending on the game, but that's a topic for another video. All in all, this unexpected purchase has turned out to be an absolute gem of a buy. It performs better than any other card I've tested so far, and aesthetically it looks absolutely brilliant. I would have liked a backplate on what was a higher end card, but there's nice GPU touches on it, like the MSI logo that kind of lights up. It manages to push out that premium feel. And with that, I think I'll leave it there. As always, thank you for tuning in this video. I'd love to hear what you think of these Maxwell powered cards and if it's something you're still going to consider buying today. Remember to use those thumbs to let me know what you thought of this video and consider clicking that subscribe button if you've not done so already. Take care folks and I'll see you all soon.